Hi everybody, it's Lori with Behavior Education. Today is Wednesday, October 16th, 2019. I'm at FedEx in Colorado Springs, about an hour away from the ranch where I live and work at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary and where I am conducting a bread lie captive behavior study. Today I'm picking up a couple of baby bread lie that came from rogue reptiles, Owen McIntyre. It's a male and female. They were hatched this year in 2019. And I've had some people inquire as to how I habituate new snakes and how I habituate baby snakes. I've done episodes of Super Dwarf Sunday with my Super Dwarf Articulated Python on that subject. But if you haven't seen those episodes, I'm going to basically show you from the beginning how I receive new baby snakes and then how I go about setting them up at home and habituating them to our routine, to handling, how I start target training and station training them and anything that I'm going to be doing with them. I hope you enjoy the videos. It's going to be an ongoing series about these two particular snakes. I've already picked out names for them, Spock and number one. How I train each one and how I approach habituating them and desensitizing them really depends on the species of snake and their individual personalities, which we won't know until we open up this box and see what they're like from the get-go. Sometimes the temperament that they seem to have when you first open the box up, put them in the transport tubs, is not the temperament that they exhibit once they get home and get settled in. So the very first thing that we need to do is open them up, see how they behave here, put them in their transport tubs. I don't transport them in the shipping box because it's another hour drive before we get home. So I want them in transport tubs, which may also double as their quarantine containers. And then I'm gonna just pretty much observe them for a week or two, let them get settled into our environment, our routine, the smells in our home, the climate here, the activity that goes on in our household. And I will observe their personalities over that time and then based on how they behave, I will determine what is the best way to go about habituating them and training them. So in their temporary tub, I have a paper towel roll. I have a 3D printed perch from Specialty Enclosure Designs with a water dish in it. I have just a little cardboard box as a hide and the substrate in this one for now is just paper towels. This is what uh, he or she will ride home in and probably stay in for at least a few days until I decide if I'm going to quarantine them in these or in something else. about them, when they last ate, what they last ate. Excellent. Thank you, Owen. bread lie. Hi little girl. I know it's very scary. You don't have no idea what's going on. So I don't reach in and take them out. That's part of my process is leaving them in the bag and I just roll the bag down and they can come out on their own. It's okay, so she's very scared. She's kind of hiding her head and her coils. Um, I got a couple of little tongue flicks, but I don't want to reach in and mess with her. That would be flooding her. She's already frightened. She's already exhibiting um, body language that tells me she's scared. Obviously, she has no clue what's going on. She just traveled from uh, Pennsylvania to Colorado, and I'm just going to set her in the tub and let her come out as she pleases. 
I am going to put just a little bit of water in the water dish, not so much that it's going to spill, but just enough that if she does want to have a drink, she has access to some water. I have had a couple of snakes drink when they arrive. It's not common, but it's, it's possible. So it's there if she wants it. Okay, I'm going to open up bag number two. Same thing in this quarantine tub. I have a 3D um, perch printed by Specialty Enclosure Designs, a water dish, a little cardboard hide box, and this one has reptile carpet in it as a substrate for now. So I'm going to, this is the male. His name is going to be Spock. And these babies are from a LASIK line female, um, Owen's female raven. And the father's name is Raptor. And it's a stone washed uh, bread lie. So here's this little guy. Again, they're scared. They don't know what's going on. Lots of head hiding going on. And so I just want to let them be and decide to come out on their own. I'm not going to reach in and grab them. I don't want to flood them. I want them to slowly habituate to me and see that I'm not a threat. So again, I'm just going to set him in here and then he's free to come out as he chooses or not. It's an hour drive home. Oftentimes the snakes do come out during the drive and they start climbing around uh, the transport tub. More often than not, that's what happens, but that's not always the case. Some of them just choose to stay in the deli cup or in the bag that they arrived in. I am going to head home with these two. It's very nice to finally have them here. It's about an hour drive to get home, so I'm gonna hit the road and stay tuned for more updates as these guys get settled in. Thanks again. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, and I appreciate you watching. everybody, it's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I just arrived home from picking up two Morelia bread lie babies from FedEx. This is Spock and number one. They were produced by Owen McIntyre at Rogue Reptiles. They were hatched on August 23rd, 2019, and so they're not even quite eight weeks old yet. They'll be eight weeks old in two more days. Spock and number one are babies from Owen's LASIK line female Raven and a stonewashed male named Raptor. I'm pretty familiar with Raven's babies here because I have three others. I have two 2018 babies that were produced by Owen and they were from Raven and a male named Hawk. And then I have a 2014 baby that was produced by Owen and his name is Benu. He's the one that's on my logo. And Benu's parents are Raven and Fox. So this will be five of Raven's babies that I have here. I'm obviously in love with them. I like their personalities. I like their temperaments. They've been really good to work with. Although the three babies that I already have here, Bennu, Mrs. Peel, and X452, all have different personalities. They're not all alike. And that also is very appealing to me. I like that they are very much individuals and that they find pleasure and displeasure in different things and that they're not all um, carbon copies of one another, but all three babies are very inquisitive, very smart, very healthy, very good feeders, and quite interactive with what's going on in the environment and with me. So we will just have to see how uh, Mr. Spock and number one turn out. They're very, very shy so far today. Normally, Owen wouldn't send them out until they've had 10 or more meals in their system. I think these have had three or four meals, and they've been a little bit hard to get started, and he's going to Australia very, very soon. So he went ahead and sent two of the hatchlings to me because we have a lot of bread lie here. I have a lot of experience with bread lie. 
I'm not going to be intimidated by trying to get them fed and I'm not going to be stressed if there's any issues with them not feeding. So we'll see if we can't get these two going. And then that way, if something happens to Owen and he doesn't survive his trip to Australia, at least these two are already in a home. They're going to be part of my series on how to habituate baby snakes, how to habituate snakes in general when you first bring them to your home and how you would go about assessing their temperaments and personalities so that if you're interested in doing more with them like training or other activities that you will know how to best go about that. All of that is based on their individual personalities. So whether I target train versus station train, whether I handle a lot versus not handling a lot, whether I let them do puzzle mazes or not, whether I let them out into exercise areas or not, all of those activities that we have developed here for our bread life are dependent upon the individual animal's personality. These two are pretty shy so far. They haven't even left their little travel bags. And so that's fine. We have bread light here that are extremely outgoing and they ask to come out every evening when they wake up and it doesn't matter if they just fed the night before or if it's been two weeks since they fed. They obviously find it very reinforcing to be let out and they explore and they climb and they're very, very active. And then we have other bread light here that are very, very shy and they don't want a lot of interaction with people and they don't really want to come out of their enclosure even when offered the opportunity of the open door. And then we have bread light all in between there with different personalities and different, different spirits of adventure, etc. So we'll have to see how these babies develop, but I just thought I would let everybody know that I'm home safely with them. We're back here at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. We're gonna get them settled in and I'll show you a quick glimpse of how they're doing in their travel slash quarantine bins. sweetie I know it's very scary you don't know what's happening oh a tongue flick thank you thank you for that tongue flick well I have to go feed horses and take care of other animals so you just stay here and get acclimated and I'll check on you later this is number one who is also still in her travel sack. I don't know where her head is. All right, well, I'm going to let you guys be. I'm glad you're here safely. You guys just settle in and I'll check on you later. Oh, did he come out? Where is he? So Spot came out of his little bag and he's in his paper towel roll. Progress, yay. I'm going to still leave him alone though. I want him to feel safe. are going to check on number one and she has not come out that's okay hi number one hey pretty there she is there's her head she has a very unique I think and pretty head stamp she has like one dot behind her forehead and the markings that are between her, the back of her skull and her neck are pretty unique looking. Once she's out and about, we'll obviously get better looks at him, but we're going to leave her be and let her settle in. Just wanted to check on her. Let's check on number one again and see if she is still in her bag or if she can't. Oh, she's out. Hi, number one. Are you exploring? I'm really happy to see that. I want to leave you alone though. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not go anywhere. Did you just wake up and decide it might be fun to be out? Let's stay here, okay?
There you go. Let's just stay in there for tonight. This isn't a good time to come explore. But I'm really happy to see that you have an adventurous spirit. Yep, I sure am. Yeah, that's okay. All right. You're going to have to stay in here. Alrighty then. Well, hi, it's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. It is about seven and a half hours since I picked up number one and Spock. And earlier, when I checked on them, Spock was in his paper towel roll and number one had not left her transport bag. She was still in there. So I just checked on her now and she was out um, exploring around her temporary tub. She was on her 3D printed perch and she started jumping out of the enclosure, jumping out of the tub, wanting to explore around the outside of the tub. My video started going wonky and she wasn't letting me put the lid on. So I thought, okay, if you're going to be that way, then we'll do a short introduction video. So this is number one. She's a Morelia bread lie. She was hatched August 23rd. 2019, produced by Owen McIntyre at Rogue Reptiles. Her mother is Raven, a LASIK line female, and her father is Raptor, a stonewashed male. And she suddenly just decided to be really outgoing. So here she is. This is number one. She's not quite eight weeks old. In two more days, they'll be eight weeks old. So they are here a little early, but that's okay because I can start working with them, evaluating their temperament and personality, and then determining how to go about working with them and training them. But just based on her behavior right now, I would say she isn't going to be in a tub for very long. She's going to be pretty quickly moved into the exoterra terrariums. Uh, with the other babies because she's decided to be pretty outgoing and inquisitive and that's great that's that's really the personality I like in these bread lie get a close up of her Thanks everybody. Stay tuned for more because this pair is gonna be followed really closely and I'll be producing the series on how to habituate your new snakes and get them settled in using this pair as an example. But I will refer to some of my older bread lie and tell you stories about them and how they were when they arrived and how they got habituated. But you'll get to see these guys being habituated and trained from the beginning, literally day one, which is today.